I'm just going to highlight something that's quite common if you're using sliders or carousels on your website. Now, I've got two examples on here. One of them is the one I want to show you. And the bottom one is what a lot of us tend to do. Now, if you notice the slides are auto scrolling across, please don't worry that they're slightly out of sync because they are two separate sliders. But what you'll notice is that you can see a gap between the bottom ones. So when you go from slide one to two to three to four, etc., you see that white line appear because it's been set to only show you one slide at a time. You're going to see the gap in between them. Now, the one above is an exact copy of what we have below. But just by thinking a little bit outside and inside the box, you can actually hide that. So yes, you can still see the slide effect and you can still drag with your mouse as well. So you don't lose any of the functionality, but the difference is that if I just move my mouse so it resumes the auto scrolling, you don't see that white gap appear. And if you've got like a hero banner or a section where you don't want to show three or four slides all in one go, you want to have like a headline statement, a bit of text, maybe a call to action button, but then you just want this auto scrolling slider. By the way, you don't have to have it set to auto play, auto scroll. You could just do it manually. All you've got to do is make sure that the container the slider sits in matches the color of your background color for your slides. And that's what I'm going to show you here right now. Let's just focus on the bottom one at the moment, okay, just to see how this was built out. So we've got a parent container. We have two child containers. Child container one, by the way, the parent is set to be a row. Child container one just contains a heading and a text editor. Child container number two just contains your carousel. And like I said, you would go and build it out. Each one of these carousels just contains obviously a container inside. And then you got icon, heading, heading. So they got a heading there and a separate heading. Why have I got two headings? Well, you may want to apply different styling to your different headings. And now we've got a bit of a text editor as well. Now, if we go back over to the carousel, this is set to be slide on display one and slide on scroll one. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. Please excuse the fact that I am hiding the sliders now because they're slightly behind me. But we are showing one slide at a time, equal height. The settings, autoplay. I've set it to two seconds for now because normally you would go for four or five seconds, but just so that you could see how it was moving, I've set it to two seconds. And in terms of the navigation, I'm only showing the pagination for the dots, but I'm not showing the arrows because when you show the arrows, it's, you know, I mean, I know you can mess around with how they're positioned so you can offset them or move them outside of your slide. But I find for this particular effect, if you are going to show it on a hero banner, the pagination will be enough. But as you can see, they sit below the slides. Now then, you can go to style and you can go to pagination and you could start to mess around with your spacing and all of this. All this is going to do when you set it to zero is set it to how far it is from the bottom of the slide. And if you increase it, it moves it away. If you go and add in a minus number, and I'm going to make a point of this, so I'm going to pop in minus 50. If I go and give it a color, it will appear within, but you're not really getting rid of that white gap you see every time it moves from slide one to slide two. So here's the trick of what you need to do. We're going to go over to the carousel. Okay, this is still exactly the same as what I had before. We've got the pagination. The only difference is that I've now used a white color. Now, I do want to point out, in the bottom one, we did add a background color to the containers for where all of the icon, the headings, and the text editor sat, because that's what you can see here at the moment. You can see this dark color. But on the top one, the color is completely removed. So on the container, there's no color. On the slide, there is no color. Even on the carousel, there is no background color at all added. What I did instead was go to the actual child container that holds everything. If we go to the style there, that is where their color is applied. So now you're always going to have this color behind it. So as it moves, you're not getting that break. Because if we just go back to what we're seeing when you're looking at the preview, that white gap for me jars the sliding movement. It really jumps out at you. And also you can see the slides moving, but I feel like the top one, even though it's doing the same thing, it feels so much more fluid. These little things can massively boost your user experience. Hey, I'm Imran from Web Squadron. Like, subscribe, go and check out our courses. Links are in the video description. I'll see you soon.